What's up guys, Odie Bookshees here, and today at Feel Suspension, we're installing the brand new Weissfab angle kit for the IS300. I'm very excited about this kit. Uh, we love these chassis. Our sales guy, Mike, owns one, and we are going to be installing it on his car. We also have built an IS wagon before and took it out drifting, and it was a ton of fun. So I'm really glad to see an angle kit for the chassis. Let's check out the actual components of the angle kit and go over some of the features. Before we rip into this thing, let's check out the stock suspension. This is a pretty traditional suspension. It's a rear steer, which is similar to a 240, but what's cool about the IS is an upper control arm and a lower control arm. It's not a McPherson strut. I really dig this suspension design. The biggest flaw on these ISs is after you lower them, the upper control arm starts to get really close to the actual chassis. So this is at full droop, and you can imagine how close this gets under compression, just at static ride height, and then you literally barely have any space for suspension travel left. There might even be an indent somewhere here of this part actually hitting. So that's one of the issues, and obviously, you know, there's no camber adjustability built into the upper control arm. We got just a little bit of it at the lower control arm. Everything's on rubber, so it's not really sturdy. We're gonna take care of all that, or at least I should say Weissfab takes care of all that. So we're gonna pull this stuff off and we're gonna get to installing the Weissfab parts. So we're pulling the suspension off and here's a great view of what's happening. The, this part of the upper control arm where the ball joint press is in is actually smacking into the chassis itself. Uh, that's never a, a nice sound and it's definitely not a good thing for the suspension to abruptly run out of travel. Weissfab luckily addresses that and I'm um, stoked to see that and put into the design. What you see here is everything the kit includes. The only thing that is optional are these brake lines. They do make them, which makes it a whole lot easier to pull off the install because you could uh, ensure that these are the correct length. So I suggest getting these, it saves you some time. So you don't need to run around, buy extra pieces or parts. So here are all the bolt-on pieces that are powder coated, ready to go. Right here is an awesome piece of engineering. This is a piece of sheet metal with all kinds of intricate cutouts. And what's gonna happen here is we're gonna cut the factory subframe and this piece is gonna get welded in. This is gonna allow us to move the rack further forward. And that is a absolutely necessary vital component of making a drift car work properly because after you alter the steering geometry so heavily, if you don't do this, you're gonna have over centering at angle. You're also gonna destroy the Ackerman angle if you modify the knuckle heavily without moving the actual steering rack in the correct position. So the guys at Weissfab did all the engineering for us and created templates that we're gonna lay over the factory cross member and it's gonna allow us to make the right cuts and weld this thing right in. So we'll get to that in just a minute. These are the adapters that bolt to the factory knuckle. And this is really where the magic happens. This is uh, what controls a lot of the steering geometry. Most Weissfab kits come with adjustable Ackerman and there's a few washers for a few different settings here for you to try out. Also, this is really cool. This is uh, very similar to how it is on S chassis kits and many others. This is a lock stopper. So basically this limits steering angle and you could dial this in to your preference. Obviously every single driver has different preferences and it depends on what size tire you're running and wheel you're running, what kind of um, interference you may have. Every car is different, so you might have to limit some steering angle if you're running a really big tire and wheel setup, or if you got tons of clearance, you can kind of utilize the majority of the steering angle that this kit has to offer. While Carlos is ripping apart all the stock suspension, getting it all out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the subframe. We have a spare subframe for this car, so that way while we're uninstalling everything, we're able to go ahead and get cracking on the subframe. Weissfab includes really detailed instructions on how to perform all these cuts. So first step was cutting these pieces off here, off the bottom of the subframe. We just throw those out so we have a nice smooth surface to work off of. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these templates out. And then once the templates are cut out, you can go ahead and lay them as per instructions, trace over where you need to make the cuts, and we'll go ahead and start cutting this thing up. 
and this is what they look like all cut out. Here's a little trick when you're cutting these things out. Some of them require you to cut a nice round hole in it. So what I do is I just cut straight through it and then go ahead and cut around the hole. Makes it a whole lot easier. And then also WiseFab recommends to use double-sided tape in order to lay these templates down. And while I'm tracing them, they'll stay put. After laying the templates down, tracing them, I went ahead and cut all the way around. This took a little while, it took some patience. The tech tip for this is to cut it in sections. So I cut the ends out first. And the reason you wanna do section is, is once you cut the sections out, you gain visibility that there's actually support that runs in between you know, the whole stretch of the subframe. So if we're just cutting along where you're told to cut here, you're gonna notice that the whole section that you just cut isn't just coming off. So cut sections out at a time, do a great job of showing you what it's gonna look like after you cut it out. So kind of take a mental image of what you're gonna see under here. And then that's exactly what I did. And I kind of peeked through some of the holes and I went ahead and cut sections at a time. And then I was able to get in here and cut this as well. I guess the biggest thing is to look through the directions and actually read ahead and see the next steps. And that will really give you an insight of where to start cutting and how to attack this thing. While I'm working on the subframe, Carlos has removed all the factory suspension and started installing the WiseFab stuff. Here's the upper control arm and uh, we're just waiting to pull the factory cross member out, the subframe out because I am working on the spare, installing the insert. Before I show you the subframe, I wanted to stop Carlos and uh, take a little pause so I could show you exactly how this piece integrates with the factory knuckle. It's really straightforward. Here are the caliper pickup points for the brake caliper, and here's two pickup points that were here from the factory for the rest of the suspension for the lower ball joint unit. Here's this component, and it goes and lines up with these existing caliper bolt holes and YSAB does supply with longer hardware. So don't worry about this thickness. By the way, the caliper mating surface is actually on the backside here. So don't worry if you're running aftermarket calipers or you know some other big brake solution because that will not interfere. And this picks up on the factory threaded sections right there like so. Oh, we actually retained the factory dust uh, shield slash air duct for the brakes. I think it's kind of cool. If you trim it just a little bit here, it still integrates just fine with this wise fat piece. So that's a cool little tidbit. If you want to retain this and keep the rubber potentially out of the caliper, or if you just want some extra air going into your rotor, you could definitely retain this. So while Carlos is going to be installing the rest of the wise fab, I'm going to be finishing up this cross member. I went ahead and finished cutting it out completely and I just installed this rack relocation bracket in here. As you could tell, we cut quite a bit of the subframe out. This is where the steering rack picks up and it's moving quite a bit further forward and that's exactly what we need in order to have the proper Ackerman and so that way we don't over center at full lock. And uh, here's what the back side of it looks like. So Wise have supplied these sleeves as well as this really nice hardware. And I went ahead and per the instructions, install these and tighten up these bolts. So that way everything's in place where it needs to be. It's sturdy and all I have to do is start tack welding it in. WiseFab would like everyone to remove the steering rack from the car, bolt that on, and that will keep everything nice and flat as you weld it, or maybe as you uh, position this in, there's a chance that this might actually warp. Installing the rack in here will keep it nice and square. As you're welding it and tack welding it in place, it'll ensure that this stays nice and flat. So when you permanently install the rack, it will be flush like it needs to be up against this bracket. So I just wrapped up welding this thing in and I didn't want to remove the steering rack out of the car because we still have all the hydraulic lines hooked up and we just didn't want to open up another mess. So the steering rack's just chilling there. And if you don't want to take off the rack, there's a uh, kind of a way to ensure that this insert doesn't get warped. So what I did is I took an inch and a half by inch and a half square piece of tubing and I just tacked it in place right next to where the rack would bolt up to. So this thing could stay square, even though it's getting very hot as I'm welding it all the way around the perimeter of the plate. 
This is what the subframe looks like after the insert is fully welded in. We threw some paint on it, it's still a little sticky, but we're gonna go ahead and let it dry a little bit and then install it and button everything up. Well, I'm glad that while I was building the subframe, installing the rack relocation, Carlos was attacking the rest of the Weiss fab because it's the end of the day, but this thing's all done. We pulled it off and Honestly, for our first time doing it ever on an IS-300, I am very happy about how fairly smooth it went. Uh, everything's thought out very well. It actually all goes into place easily. You don't have to use any pry bars or anything crazy to get things to line up. The lower control arm, upper control arm, everything just fits in and everything does come preset. And we're gonna double check all those settings once we get this thing on the ground and put some alignment tools on it, see where it's at. We're gonna set the caster, but right off the bat, I'm very happy with it. We went ahead and limited the steering stopper to the number three setting. It could get even more angle, but it looks pretty ridiculous already. We're gonna throw some wheels on it. Not sure if the wheels that Mike has for this car are gonna be conducive to the massive amount of angle this kit adds, but this thing's looking awesome. Here's another shot of the steering angle. We also went with the most aggressive Ackerman setting as well. Figure that's gonna be a safe bet, especially since this car is uh, street driven once in a while, this is gonna be the most natural feeling for Mike to drive with. So we're gonna go ahead and set the caster once this thing's on the ground. We're gonna double check toe by using the adjustable inner and outer tie rod that comes here. Uh, here's the jam nut after we're done adjusting, we'll tighten it up. The rack is fitting in super nice. It was really easy to install after I welded the rack relocation kit in there. The rack went right into place, which is great. So one thing to point out, Mike already had some uh, aftermarket aluminum bushings in his rack. If you have the rubber ones, the Weissfab kit does come with actual aluminum bushings. So don't worry about getting these bushings. The kit does come with it, which is awesome. This support brace fits right back in like as if it's factory it picks up on the rack relocation kit there's actually threaded bungs for it right here and it's spaced down a little tiny bit because this shank actually brings this control arm down a little bit but yeah everything bolts up all the hardware is supplied very happy with how fairly smooth this thing was if i have to do another is 300 i think we can knock it down quite a bit maybe even half the time it took us almost all day but we're taking our time making sure everything's right oh when you're replacing the cross member or pulling it out to put the uh, Weissfab rack relocation kit. We used a screw jack and we basically just held up the front of the 2JZ motor and uh, then it was able to hold the engine in place while we disconnected the engine mounts and then just pull this thing all the way down in order to weld the Weissfab rack relocation kit. So I hope you guys enjoy that quick little process. We're gonna give you some shots of this thing when it's on the ground uh, with the steering angle. And I'm gonna take it for a spin and see how it feels. Here's a shot of what the angle looks like from underneath the car at full droop. The caster has not been set yet, so things might not be exactly the way they should be. And it has the most aggressive Ackerman washers in there. That, that's why you can tell the leading tires turned in more than the following tire. These are the Ackerman washers right here, the most aggressive one in there. So if you wanted to get parallel steer, we could put the zero Ackerman washer in there and we would have fairly even lead to trail uh, wheel angle. 